Hi guys, welcome back to Drumhead. If you're wondering that, um, if you think Mike's had a shave in the little break since the last lesson, no, it's just me this time. So I'm still here, we're still here with Ian. Um, and in this lesson, we're gonna talk about some sort of introduction and, and, and around some jazz concepts um, to see if we can build some more grooves and things out of that. Um, and we're gonna talk, obviously we're gonna talk about that with, uh, with Ian. How you Ian, doing? Over to you. Yeah, okay, jazz. <clears throat> <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, the jazz thing is something I've, I've was, uh, the jazz thing is something I was introduced to as, as a as a kiddie um, <clears throat> with my first drum teacher, Mike, <clears throat> and I suppose. I think the root of it in my playing is from the days when I was first being taught drums back in the 70s. Mm. Um, and the kind of work my dad used to do, um, being like social club, um, music for dancing kind yeah. of thing. Because yeah. that's how it used to be back in those days. Yeah. I mean, that was a tail end of the old ways of socialising. So people would go to the dance yeah. on a Saturday yeah. night. And they would have these sequence dances, as they, as they called them. Um, the kind of thing that you're watching nowadays on Celebrity Come Dancing yeah, and such. Yeah. You know, you have the tango and you have the foxtrot and um, quick step. And if I remember rightly, the Mayfair quick step, which is faster than the quick step. Right. And the Velita, the farmer's wife is one. Uh, comes out the back of my mind, that one. Um, you know, so yeah, you have a lot of the Latin American grooves um, and um, you have the, uh, yeah, the dances. So obviously it's coming out of the swing era. Yeah. So, um, as opposed to like being trained to play like, you know, Tony Williams or do some kind of like Elvin Jones kind of abstract work, yeah. the basis of it for me was um, learning the dance grooves of the day mm. as a kid. And um, obviously you got, you know, the quick step and the foxtrot. So the quick step, you know, uh, literally using that jazz ride pattern, um, which is one, two, to three, four, to one. With the enormously important hi hat on the two and the four. And then feathering the bass drum yeah. on the on the four to the floor. Um, but this this is that's applicable, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So and then sometimes just doing this. So that's that. That's an art in itself. Yeah. Playing, playing that, playing that bass drum so lightly. Yeah, that's just, this Getting is the control over. I'm, I'm, I probably should be arrested by the bass drum technique police because um, <laughs> I don't consider myself having a very good bass drum technique. It's not right. something I've really gone into that much. I did have a teacher in my teens, a Bristol guy called Paul Cleaver, take me through some bass drum techniques mm. and stuff. But for me, if I'm if I'm rocking out or giving it, I play with my heat up yeah. and get that. And if I'm playing jazz stuff or want to whisper, then it's heel down. Yeah. It kind of promote naturally promotes quite a sound. Yeah, I, I, I yeah I, agree. I I do exactly the same, but I don't think about that anymore. No, yeah, it just happens. Yeah, same as I don't know if you do the same. Do you, do you play traditional grip at all when you're playing sort of jazz big band stuff? I or? used to do a lot of a lot of traditional grip. Um, the teacher I was talking about earlier from the ex army guy, he did the original warm up yeah. Um, yeah. thing exercise. Um, he really got me to play traditional. Mm. Up to that point, my original teacher had only made me play traditional with the brushes. Right. But it was all matched to the yeah. rest of the yeah. drum kit with the sticks. But he really got me to play the, the traditional grip. And it is a, it is a beautiful grip. Mm. It's a beautiful form. We can argue all day about the, the twos and fro's of if it's correct or not and stuff. And I actually find match grip is perfectly good enough for me with, with the yeah. drum kit as it is. But especially when you're playing more of a jazz sort of vibe, this kind of, when you're on the ride cymbal, the ride cymbal's pulling you along. It's creating the feel. And then you've got the rest of your body kind of coming along with that. You've yeah. got that kind of movement. I mean, this is just a way I yeah, feel yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And it also looks really cool. Yeah. Dead, dead smart. Because you've got a nice, relaxed 
yeah. arm yeah. here and you've got all this work going on over here and blah, 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 on the left hand. Yeah. Um, I had an accident back in 2010. I fell over and I broke this knuckle and my hand's never been the same since. Right. Um, and so I got muscle wastage here. So to play serious traditional grip, it kind of hurts. Mm. I can still do it. And occasionally when I'm playing jazz or if I'm doing something where I got to play really lightly, I will use this grip. Yeah. So. Yeah. It kind of promotes yeah, yeah. that. It does. It just to me. I, I did a series of quite a lot of big band gigs last year, and I just find myself playing that way. Right. Yeah. Not thinking about it. it just goes. Yeah. Oh, I played this style. This seems to happen. Yeah. yeah. But I think both ways. I mean, to me, looking at um, traditional grip. If it's good enough for Buddy Rich, it's kind of good enough for all of us. That's the way he's all looking. The thing at, is, you know? he was cheeky because he played both as well. Yeah, yeah. He every now yeah. and again swap, swap over. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think I used to do much more traditional mm. when I had a better hand. Um, thankfully, I had some good technique lessons over the years. My, my fulcrum now is in here. Right. That's where the grip happens, yeah. oddly. It took me quite a while to adjust to that. Yeah. And I still got a slightly errant drumstick. It has a doesn't have a smooth passage. Because of the injury. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, but I still got my career. I can still play fast <laughs> enough, loud enough. But yeah, I think traditional is a, is a beautiful, a beautiful form. Mm. But um, anyway, uh, as I was saying, so um, that was where it came from. Right. That the control of that kind of rhythm, mm. basically. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I think it's a, it's becoming. I think maybe a little bit of a lost art now. The art of actually learning jazz from you know, whereas whereas probably when I think we're at a similar age when we started to play, it was something that you did. It was de rigueur, it was, you know, it and, was, and that's what yeah. you did. And now I think it's becoming less and less. So now yeah. when I get people coming to me that want to learn jazz, it's almost like oh, okay, that's quite unusual. So yeah. it's not it's nowhere near as often as it used to be. I mean, jazz itself is a, is a thing in itself. I mean, it's you know, it has its history. It has its different music forms. Yeah. Today, jazz almost re represents uh, a flight of your own imagination yeah. as a musician. Yeah. It's not necessarily about that rhythm anymore. Yeah. And so forth, yeah. you know? Yeah. One of the things I do do to promote my ability to play it is, I mean, when I, when I tour, I play with 5A drumsticks. So when I'm playing heavily, playing rock music, or most of the stuff I do is with a set of 5As, um, if I'm playing a venue which is a bit smaller or slightly lighter music form, in fact that drum kit's tuned up, drum sticks, um, I use a 7A. Okay. It's a little right. thinner, a little yeah, bit yeah. wispier. Yeah. Um, and because you've got a little less contact mm. with the cymbal, so it makes it a tiny bit sort of lighter sounding. Um, but I find when I'm actually playing jazz proper, and I, I'm playing a few different groups around Bristol, um, when the, one of them, the artist I play with is a guy called John John Pierce. He's a beautiful violinist. We mm. brought an album out last year called Just Friends with a pianist called Dave Newton, who is forever winning jazz UK jazz right. awards as a pianist. Um, and Will Harrison bass, is an upright bass player. So I'm playing with a, a violinist, an upright bass player, and a pianist. And you know, I don't want power as such. Yeah, so yeah. I play with these AJ fives. That are a bit more old school, a bit more like the drumsticks that my uncle would use or drummers from the 70s yeah. and the 60s, you know? Yeah. Um, and they make a lovely thin sound. Wow. So if I go back to the, uh, the 5A. Huge difference. Just by changing my drumstick, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've given yeah. myself half a chance. Yeah. So that's kind of really useful. That style of playing that you're talking about there, though, couldn't be further away from what you actually do, you know, your main gig, could it? Yeah, well, um, I, I guess um, I had this kind of jazz discipline. Uh, a lot of my exercises were um, jazz orientated, apart from Boston Overs and the rest of it. Mm. Um, I went through the Jack Parnell book. Jack Parnell was an old drummer from the back in the day, right. and he brought out this book. Um, and... I was studying from that before I ever looked at the Jim Shapin, you know, the legendary Jim yeah, Shapin yeah, book. Yeah. Um, and um, so I had this ability to, to play those parts, to do those things that jazz drummers do. Yeah. Um, but when I was about 11 or so, 
um, a friend of mine showed me um, ACDC right. and Deep Purple <laughs> and Iron Maiden. In fact, my first ever album I bought was Iron Maiden Live After Death, right. um, the double album on cassette. And um, so I had this practiced ability, I had this practice room ability, but I had my head was going, my actual taste was going yeah. this way. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I fully got immersed in that world of new wave of British heavy metal and stuff, mm. metal red and everything. So um, I didn't actually do my first rock band thing until I was about 18. Right. Actually. Well. I went for my first well. interview, first interview, my first audition. Um, so, so yeah, so I kind of live in both worlds. I think that's great though, because that's you can pull from each into in, into the other as well. There's yeah. influence, isn't there? It's, it's, it still amazes me how many people you, you talk to are playing an instrument who don't listen to any music. No, it's like you know, yeah. what you're listening to at the moment. I'm not listening to anything. It's like, well, yeah, why? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, you know, there's got to be that element of influence somewhere that you you hear something and go, oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah, let's dig into that and see yeah. what that is. Whether it's jazz or rock or well, I mean, the fir- my first actual drum hero was Buddy Rich. Yeah. And that was Cliché as the Hills. I watched him when I was, I think, about 14 in Bristol. Mm. Right. This old man get up on stage, tell a few jokes, make everyone roll around with laughter, get behind a drum kit, and turn into a teenager. His arms just disappeared <laughs> for the next hour and a half, you know. Yeah. And that's almost like, he was almost like a beautiful kind of combination of the two. A bit like what Ginger Baker and Mitch Mitchell were kind of emulating in mm. their own way, was that you have this jazz player playing big band music, uh, but like a rock monster. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the two yeah. fusing together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where I come from. Mm. That's why you've got my two sides. I think they both inform each other, though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you know I what think, mean? Yeah, definitely. I think so. I mean, you've talked about the earlier on in the previous lesson. You talked about the sort of the drum core stuff. Again, I, I did a lot of drum core for twenty years, and, and I think that influences what we play a lot with the rudiment side of things that we may put a certain different sticking pattern in because of a background of playing quite yeah. rudimental things. I mean, I was very young at the time. I know we weren't a very good, we weren't a very good drum call. We never won any competitions. Mm. We used to come kind of pretty much last. Right. <laughs> but it was still, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was still the exposure to playing with others. Yeah. And having to try and make, be matched. Yeah, listening to each other. And, yeah. yeah. And the other right. thing is there was always a comp- com- uh, competition between us, drum- us snare drummers to be the lead snare drummer. Yeah. And one of the one of the things I always remember was, you know, to out double stroke, uh, out single stroke roll the yeah. other guys. So <laughs> like when I was about 10 or 11, I was like, in a good, you know, just yeah, yeah. trying, ah, I've got you. So, um, Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. For me, you know, it represents something very, very opposite to, say, Kasabian, which is delivered. You know, um, I, I deliver the show. I make it powerful. I make it poignant and strident, majestic, even. Yeah. Um, and then when I come back home to Bristol and I start doing maybe some jazz stuff, I get to play a completely different drum kit. I mean, I wouldn't use a drum kit like this. It's 24, 13, 16. I'll probably use a 20, 12, 14. Or even my little limp kit, which is a 16, 10, 13, when you're matching 13 snare. 12 inch snare, I think, actually. Um, I do use these symbols, actually, for the jazz stuff. I've got a nice sizzle symbol. Which is beautiful. Nice. And I've got this lovely Constantinople. That's which really it, nice. It's that. got very yeah. complex and everything, yeah. you know. Really, really nice. Uh, I got it tempered uh, with a really big, like, hi-hat felt underneath right so it really covers a lot of the bell so it controls the wash of the of the symbol but doesn't change its character yeah. too much and it's, yeah, it's got a lot going on but it's kind of controllable yeah. so i think the main thing with the jazz thing is just to get i mean like particularly more the traditional jazz vibe is to get the the to control that that feel yeah. and you can like you can mess with that uh, very often you'll you'll see this pattern written as a quarter note and then eighth dotted eighth sixteenth. So you sh- it's literally going one e under two e under three e under four e under one e under two e under three e under four e under one. Or you might see it written as triplets. One under two under three under four under one under eight. Interestingly, though, although that's 
I think the triplet one does work sometimes, but it can sound a bit pure. Yeah. yeah. So you might want to do the more angular one. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you can make that that uh, dotted eighth, sixteenth into like quintuplets. <laughs> Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And change the feel. So. Suddenly it sounds relaxed. Yeah. Now it depends what you want to do to that band you're playing with and, and that soloist or whatever's happening at the time. Yeah how you kind of squeeze that da da out mm. to get well, again, some urgency. We, I think you talked about it earlier on with Mike and, and again we're going to talk about it again. Choice. We talk about this all the time that work on the options Yeah. so then you can choose which one works for that musical setting Yeah. and then all of a sudden you become that band's hero because it feels good. Yeah, because you're giving them something. Yeah, and it's for the music. You're giving them something to rest on. Yeah, if you can play that pattern in one way. Yes. Yes. It's going to work maybe a quarter of the time, perhaps? Or? Yeah, not always. Yeah. Exactly, not always. Mm. Um, and obviously, again, what I, I've got these two cymbals here. I can use them both as crashes. But also, between different soloists, I will go from this cymbal to that cymbal. Yeah. So... You got that sound? So you get these different like, <coughs> tonal sounds. Again, it makes it easier to play in that music mm. form. Sounds uh, lovely. As opposed to just trying to have a, a normal rock kit set up. And uh, yes, it is possible to play jazz on a rock kit, you know, with your 20, 16, 18, whatever you might have. Of course you can do that. And actually, a little 16-inch crash cymbal, if it's pretty good quality, can make a very interesting ride cymbal mm. under certain things. You have to pick your moment yeah, of yeah. it. You know, yeah. or a China, you can ride away on a China. Mm. Most people think China, oh my God, that's because we tend to land and go flang with the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, a, a, a China can be like an elephant ballerina. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you kind of get in, tuck inside it and play it nice and lightly and sort of try and bring the tones out of it, it can be really interesting mm. under like a tenor jazz solo. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> one of the, one of the, what are your thoughts on what the left hand's doing in jazz. Because that's one thing, obviously, that's, I think that's everybody's issue, isn't it? They can kind of yeah. work out, whether they play it right or not, they work out the, the, uh, what the jazz ride pattern is and the hi-hat's doing something and it's doing this. But then what does this hand do? It just kind of sits. Is, well, no, is, this, is, this hand's really important because it can truck things along nicely. Yeah. Um, I've noticed, actually, over time, having listened to some other players, how... Um, there's a, such a fine line with what you do with this hand because you can really mess the night up um, especially if you're over bold with it I tend to like personally tucking it in underneath what's going on with the, the ride symbols yeah. you must have heard of ghost notes obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one of the an, an, an early drum lesson that you might be having with a teacher or whatever and you've worked out that your back beats tend to dominate And you have these other passing notes and the ghost note tends to be like what we equate to being similar dynamic to the higher yeah so it kind of comes down mm -hmm. and then you can pick out your main notes so i think the same thing in jazz as well right. i do a lot of ghosting mm. and occasionally i can pull yeah pull one out mm. now there's training there's training manuals all over the place uh for for jazz independence you know once you get this going get this going then it's just a case of rhythm with this band. The eight notes so forth right yeah. but 
I'm playing the snare drum really quite obviously, really quite stridently there. But when I'm backing, um, when I'm in a, you know, I'm in a jazz situation, I've got an upright bass player, not particularly playing very loudly, and an actual pianist, he might have a little bit of light miking and whatever, um, and I'm playing a sticks tune, as opposed to a brushes tune. I'll talk about that in a minute if yeah. you like. Um, I'm going to put this down because it's bringing your way. Poke about underneath. Fantastic. It's kind of giving that rhythm a bit of travel. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you got Have you got some form of melody in your head when you're doing that, or is it what's what's? Yeah, you can do it. I, I mean. Because it, fe it felt like you were playing along to something yeah, with the structure of, of it. I was just yelling, I was singing away to right. myself. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I tend to have a nice little sing song to myself when I'm doing a solo. Right. Maybe it's the head that were, the head being the chorus yeah, yeah, yeah. in jazz yeah, yeah. 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 Um I might, it might, I might play the head in a sort of abstract way, or or, or if I'm gone free form, something might suddenly jump into my mind. Mm. I've obviously done the solos in my time where I've had nothing in there, and I've been going, "Oh my god, what do I do next?" Then it becomes more of an exercise. But uh, you know, something crops up, jumps into your mind, and that's fabulous because then you mm. kind of. Do you normally do you, do you prepare? Would you prepare things like that? I mean, it's like if you if you know you're playing this chart today, and it's got an eight bar drum solo in it, would you just see what happened on the day, or would you have pre prepared it? No, just what happens on the yeah. day. You've got enough knowledge to be able to know that something. Yeah, yeah, is yeah, gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it gets tricky is if um, I was playing with a group recently called Jazz Defenders in Bristol. Really, really, really great jazz band, jazz group. Mm. Um, and the music's really tricky and yeah there was a seven bar drum solo in there and that suddenly it's like Ugh, that's, scary, that's scary <laughs> yeah, that took a little bit more thought yeah yeah mm. you know that I knew I could do it on the night mm. yeah. but I guess you've done like all of us really you know you've done you've put your time in the practice room so that then when you actually get on the, on yeah, the stage you, it's you can feel the force to yeah. a certain degree yeah 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 I think a lot of Practicing this old thing about practicing is you earn your, your points that you can spend on the stage in the <laughs> practice room. Brilliant, probably. You yeah, yeah, I mean? that's yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Because we, we st I still get that, you know. I might I might sit down with a student and go, well, this is you know, here's the basic thing. Here's what you could do with it. Yeah. And then go, but I, but I can't do that. It's like, well, no, because you've been playing drums for three years and I've been playing drums for thirty five years. Yes. There's the difference. Mm. Yeah. So you will be able to. Yeah, having put the time into it and, and, and develop it as all develop your playing in general, then yeah. that will start to come out of you as well. Yeah, getting those little penny drops, yeah. different things, yeah. and stuff. Um, some people were faster than others for whatever reason, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, obviously, I mean, the other handy part of the life of a jazz drummer is a pair of brushes. These are really old, tired ones. I love them. <laughs> and every now and again I'm playing and this might go around somewhere but I just love the way they feel I just I just love a knackered old brush I've got an, a newer pair in there and they, they don't ever mostly don't come out right. do you know what I mean just I'm just wearing ones. them yeah, in yeah. you know <laughs> I've probably had these for the Vic Firths I reckon I've had them for around about 15 years right these ones so I love playing with brushes yeah. Doing the rudiments with the brushes is really good. If you like, like me and Mike were talking about earlier, 
going through your rudiment list with your with your brushes for a while and then just put them down shake off and then pick your drumsticks up suddenly your hands kind of mm. lighten up yeah yeah do you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. um the only thing that i find with brushes see i've gone to traditional it seems like everything i've ever seen about playing brushes is an outward movement how mm. do you play do you play that way or both ways Both. So I, I might go out with one and in with the other right I, I'm very much I've always ever done that right yeah you know what I mean it's yeah. that so but this, the, the end result is what matters yeah that's the thing isn't it? So, you know, we talk about this I talk about this all the time that almost you know I think like our education system you've got to show how you work something out yeah but if you got the answer right, then you clearly know how to do it. Yeah. There's so many different ways to do that. Yes. As long as the end result yes. is sounds good and has got the right feel for the music, yes. then almost the way that you do it is irrelevant. Yes. It's a means to an end. Like yeah. technique is a means to an end. It is, of course. You know, yes. So it all, it's all, all of all of it's a means to an yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, ultimately, um, if anyone out there is watching this this show right now, um, and you've not tried the brushes before um i recommend you buy a pair of brushes they don't even have to be super expensive mm. ones yeah. you don't need the super technical modern ones with things going on and the s signature ones just a normal pair of nice brushes uh it's good to have the, the little loop at the back here because you can make weird sounds like this and yeah. flip a brush around to get a So I recommend that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, but these these are just normal like rubber brushes, pull through with a little loop on the end, and they're, mm. they're the best to get into it. And it's literally just it's just swishes really to start with. So I'm going inwards. You can go outwards, uh, and you can just press a little bit down on on the brush to give your your swoop are kind of the kind of the pulse. Yeah. Sounds like a train. Yeah, yeah. And I guess you can hear that in different ways. That could be two. Or it could yeah. be the hands. And then I've got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, and two, and yeah. two, and one, go. One, two, three. Yeah. And then I can I can put I can add in my jazz ride rhythm. One, two, three, four, and one, two. So that brush is going left to right. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four. The one, two, three, four. This is a really good uh, rudiment, is the, the, the rough. Which is three grace notes went against the main quarter note, one well, main, main downbeat. Yeah. Seems to work really well with brushes. That sounds great. I think I think for anybody, any of uh, the younger viewers may be there as well, that, that rough there, the four-stroke rough, for some reason a few years ago, changed its name on the Vic Firth Rudiment poster to a single-stroke four. Oh, yes. For some reason. So that's the, yes. the, the, the four-stroke that Ian just played on the single-stroke four. Uh, the, the same thing. That's right, yes. But there's still a rough to me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, having brushes, you can also get weird, weird, other weird things going on as well. I mean, the bossa nova beat is pretty much, you know, something that all drummers should really know. Um, so we got one. Let's get that nice little bottom end going. One, two, three, four. It's a lovely rhythm. Yeah. And I'm going to bring in like a shaker sound.
So fantastic. I could use it more in a sort of funky way. All sorts of things you can do with, with the. It's just another sound, isn't it? Exploring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Different sounds, like you said, with the stick. You know, each stick's going to give you a different sound, different tone, depending on what you're hitting. The brushes are the same. Yes. Yeah. But I think you're 100 percent right. You should. Everybody should have a pair. I think they're just not really. Yeah. As popular as they used to be. I mean, you can get them in different guises. I think in here somewhere, I've got a pair of nylon ones that I used to. I used to have a pair of these years ago, and I, Vic Firth just brought brought them back out called the Jazz Rake. A bit wider than I remember. Hmm. They give you a slightly stronger sound. Yeah. So it's kind of a different sound to that lovely soft. Nice yeah, they're a little sound. bit like, more like a, a cross between a brush and a rod. Kind yeah, of, well, exactly. In the middle. It's the thing, I could do it with these actually, you know. Yeah. But. It's kind of kind of sound cool. I can still play the kit, but I've got a natural lower volume. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, just an interesting, different sound. And again, it's, it's something that you don't see much of now. Even you know, on the the mass amount of videos and things there is online, not a great deal about it. Well, I'm nowhere near the greatest brush player in the world, but they've they've brought me an awful lot of pleasure <laughs> and opportunities over the years. Yeah, I think I've got a pair very similar to that, the purple pair. Yeah, that would look much worse than that, but I just can't throw them away. Yeah, I know. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, put uh, some new ones and go. <laughs> no, I still like these purple ones. Yeah. <laughs> they've even got they've even got marks on the handles from like trying to do rim shots with a brush. You can still do it though. <laughs> you can still whack them, you know. <laughs> but I think no, I think that's brilliant. Ian. I mean, there's some really great things to talk about. And, sorry to look at, and for guys out there to sort of delve into the world of jazz and, and swing a little bit more yeah um well i mean it, it, for the readers out there um there is um bebop drumming by pete riley is it yeah no john riley john I mean, riley john riley yeah. that's a really good book gets you comping gets you comping skills also talks about soloing and trying to build a solo it's really the way he's mapped it all out and given you the ideas to do it. It's kind of hard work to start with, but actually it bears fruit very quickly. Right. Kind of once you get into what he's trying to tell you, yeah. you start to dream up all sorts of interesting things that will take you over to, into other sorts of music. Uh, it's also got a nice little suggestion bit at the end about different grooves, like how to apply stuff to different right. uh, shuffles and some kind of some of the Latin approaches that you might use in jazz. Mm. So. The other one is, uh, well, another one to look at is Jim Shapin's legendary book. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Modern... Modern Techniques. Mo yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I never... I never yeah, it's I blue. Forget. It's blue. It's, it's, blue. It's, the, it's that one. It's blue. Um, there is the Ramsey book, that, which is about Alan Dawson's uh, um, application to Ted Reed's um, syncopation book. Right. <clears throat> which, in, in its own way, is a really good library book to have hanging yeah. around because it's got <clears throat> all sorts of fantastic exercises in there for doing your uh, <clears throat> your accents and your syncopation and all sorts of reading and stuff. Yeah. Um, I just remember what it's called Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drum. That's the one. That's the remember one. Remembered it. Yeah. It's a absolutely, that's a lifetime's workbook yeah. really yeah. in its own kind of innocent way. In a good way as well because it, it kind of, if you're struggling with what's going where, what's lining up with there, there's sort of dotted lines in it that yeah. tells you that you've got two limbs playing at the same time. Yeah. Which is which makes it sometimes when you're looking at something it makes it look a bit easier because the print on it's not the easiest to read because it's well I don't know eight, seventy years old maybe yeah, something I like think that. Something, I yeah, something something like that, yeah. within the thirties or something it was printed once it's like, I mean, it's like stick control isn't it? at the end of the day if you can get your kind of jazz pattern going down <clears throat> you can apply any kind of uh, basic rhythm um, text to the left hand or yeah. to the bass drum yeah. this is the thing so if I go back to that. Go back to that. This is before we obviously leave this lesson. Yeah. If we uh, <clears throat> we get this rhythm going, then you can play with them with your left hand. With the bass drum. And 
between the two. So you go. And that's a really good starting point. Yeah. Even if you land up improvising those rhythms either on the bass drum, on the snare drum, or between the two, mm. you know you can figure out a kind of a, a sound. So that to me, there when you when you played between the two, the the, the snare to me sounded like stabs from a from some hard brass players. section. Yes. So you can start to pull those out and go, oh, I I I heard that in this bit yes. of the song. Right, I'm going to get that next time. It's the most one of the most amazing feelings to nail a brass section yeah. on a big bang gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even worse when you miss it yeah. and everybody else does it, and you go. Uh, yeah, okay. Good. I just missed the coda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still playing, and the band has stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody makes mistakes, and you know it's all part of learning. It's all part of learning. But that's that's fantastic. There's so much for you guys there to go and work on in this realm if you're not familiar with it. Um, wow, endless. And it is a, it is a. I believe that probably as you do, jazz is a lifelong thing. You, you, there's never, there's an horizon, yeah. and then you get to the horizon, and there's another horizon of stuff there you've is, never seen before. There is, but it all folds in on itself mm. within all the other music forms that there are and stuff. I yeah. mean, there's no such thing as just a rock drummer, mm. you know, because um, there's forever better and better rock drummers yeah. doing more and more amazing stuff with the rock drum sound, whether it be really kind of cool, like um, sort of tricks, well not tricks, not word, but like things, like <clears throat> devices with a band or something and they're doing something really clever and something amazing, or some guys who are like just got a deeper and yet even more filthy feel, yeah. you know? Um, so it's, there's never just a this or that in each field that the drum kit kind of covers, you know, as, a, as an instrument, <clears throat> there's somebody taking this instrument even further and further down the line. Yeah, yeah. Know, so. and I think in, in a way, you know, all of us that are sat in this room now, we're, we're quite lucky that we actually found this instrument in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and because it's, it's just it never ended. Yeah, a bit like this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> on that note there's a lot for you to work on guys oh, no, I... Ian's going home so <laughs> we will see you next time thanks to Ian <laughs>